So welcome to this uh, second uh, part of the tutorial and in here I'm just going to try to implement high pass filtering uh, as opposed to the low pass filtering that you would be required to implement uh, in one of the lab tasks. So we're going to be dealing with, with the same noisy data, uh, noisy audio, which is my own voice, Miri um, corrupted by, by some dog whinings. Um, and let's just um, take the Fourier transform. So this takes a Fourier transform for this. Let's try to visualize this. So this is plot um, F absolute of X. Let's just see what you get. And this is the Fourier transform or the absolute, the, ma the magnitude spectrum, if you will, uh, as you would have seen in the lab handout as well, right? Now what we're required to do here, uh, as opposed to the, the tasks in the lab handout is that I am, re I wish to extract this high frequency component. So I would assume that this is what the where the dog whining is, right? And this is where my voice would have been. Um, and I would want to null out my own voice and just hear um, what the dog whining. So in other words, in this case, my voice is the interference, which I would want to cancel out. And the dogs is something that I would want to listen. That's my signal of interest. So I would, you have to use something called high pass filtering. And that high pass filtering, what we would actually do is it would try to null out all of these components to zero, right? So let's say if the, if the cutoff was five kilohertz. So what I would want is all of the components starting from zero hertz, all the way up to 5,000 hertz, all of them should be zeroed and all of the elements above five kilohertz, they stay exactly as they were in the original audio, right? So there's a cutoff element here. So the cutoff, which is five kilohertz. Now, um, I, one of the manual ways to do it would have been that I find out what index in my F vector corresponds to five kilohertz, right? So there must be, um, so F, so remember, is a vector which linearly increases from zero, right? In spacings of some linearly spaced and keeps on increasing, keeps on increasing. And at some point, um, it would be, would reach five kilohertz. And I want to identify what index number corresponds to five kilohertz. And I could do that manually. I could just open up the F vector and just start looking at where I get five kilohertz. And that would be my, my index जिससे पहले मैंने सारी जीरो करने और उसके ऊपर जाके सारे के सारे वन करने, right? Uh, और exactly वही रखने इसने पहले थे, right? Um, however, uh, there must be a better way, and there must be an automated way of doing it, and that's what we're going to try here. So for that automated way, I would want to first of all specify a variable which is f cutoff. So this represents the cutoff frequency. In other words, all of the frequency components below 4000 hertz should be nulled out and all of the frequency components above this cutoff frequency should be kept as they are, right? Now, uh, in order to move forward, let me compute df, which is, uh, if you recall uh, from the explanations in the handout as well and, and in the documentation of Fourier transform, that the frequency vector that you get from the Fourier transform function is linearly spaced is linear space. In other words, the, the frequency spacing between any two adjacent elements in F, they stay exactly uh, the same always. And that is DF. So let me just pick up F2 and F1. And this gives me what the, the spacing, inter uh, element spacing and the F vector is. And then in order to find out what the cutoff index would be, or so let me cut off index, that would be just simply F cut of divided by df. Now this may not necessarily be um, uh, an integer, but remember all indexes have to be integer in, in, in MATLAB. So I can just use seal function here. I mean, you could use floor as well if you want, it wouldn't make a lot of difference, but that, that's fine. Uh, there are certain nuances there. We, we don't want to worry about them too much. Um, so if I do a seal, so it's just going to round it up, round it up to uh, seal it up to an integer. Okay. Um, and just, let's just, Analyze what this does. Oops. Happened. Line six. Oh, so I had an extra. All right. Okay. So I, I run this and let's see what the cutoff index is. Cutoff index turns out to be 25,448. 
Um, and if I just evaluate the frequency vector at the cutoff index, uh, you should verify. Okay. So this goes, this, this is 3,999.8 hertz. So that's, that's very, very close to 4,000 hertz that we were looking for, right? So, and then what we want is, then what we want is that we want to null out all of the frequency components before this index and we want to keep all of the frequency components above this index. And for that, what I do is I will uh, use the following. There are many, many ways of doing it. I will use the following trick. So this I say x filtered equals x, right? So this is x filtered for now. Is this exactly what x was? The complex numbers. So it's not just the absolute values. It's just the complex numbers as well. And then what I will do is x filtered uh, one all the way up to cutoff index. That should be zero and this would automatically mean that i've nulled out all of the the elements from one all the way up to cutoff index and all the other the up above they stay exactly as they were earlier uh, and then let me just compute the uh, the equivalent time domain signal this is x filter uh, with versus time inverse fresh Fourier transform and this is x filtered and f and fs um, and this let me just me play for you right so fingers crossed let's see what happens so uh, my cutoff frequency is four kilohertz and it's a high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of four kilohertz let me play this out So, so this is maybe perhaps the, the perfect result that you were looking for, which was uh, that my my voice has completely been drowned out. Right? And, and that's basically what that means is that my voice, that my voice is uh, all of the the frequency components my voice is are, are, are spread out from zero to 4000 hertz. And there's no components above 4000 hertz. And, and the beauty of this, this defining this as a variable really is of this automation really is that I can change this and I can play around and see what happens. So if I do this as, if I change this to 2000, remember if I were doing this manually, what I would have had to do was every time I change this F cutoff, I would have had to find this cutoff index manually again and again, right? But this is an automated way of doing it. it the code does it for me. All I need to do is just change one variable. So let's try this out uh, here. So 2000 ka cutoff hai. Uh, let's see what happens. See, so this is interesting. Uh, you can see some part of my voice, uh, but but that's not the entire, so there, that is distorted. Um, frequencies You cannot hear them out. I can once again play around even more, let's say 500 hertz. So it's gonna be, closer to what the original signal was. Um, let's play it out again. And you can you can play with this uh, as you wish. So I can do this, let's say this is 6,000 Hertz and see what happens. See, so so now the 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 dog whining is also drowned out. So um, this is a nice, fun way to play with these audio signals, and you you can you can come up with many many other variations as well.